Hi, so it's pretty obvious what this is. It's a toner cartridge from a laser printer. Now these are ubiquitous. What you're meant to do with them is return them in the recycle bin and get a new one. What actually happens with them is they end up in the bin because it's a real pain to do that. So lots of them just end up kicking around or end up in the bin. I've got about half a dozen that I still haven't got around to recycling and keep meaning to do that. But I looked at them and I thought, do you know what? That's a ton of gear. I wonder what is actually in there and can any of this be used? So I dissembled this. Now I've told you it's brother because it's important. They all have the basic same bits and pieces in them. It's a big old tank takes a toner. Then there's a bar that mixes it up. There's another bar that spreads it out. There's a blade in there that puts it on the imaging roller and that puts it on your paper. So all of that is what, what's contained in here. But the specific implementation could be different from toner cartridge to toner cartridge, but those elements are always in there. So I thought, well, let's take that to pieces and see what's in there. So it's exactly what I did. Now the main components are obviously the plastic case and this stuff. This is toner. Now there's always some toner left over because the thing gives you a blink and stops working while there's a little bit of toner in there. So there's always toner left in these things. I've got actually, uh, that jar's about half full of toner when, when it was blinking. So I feel ripped off by that because that's a lot of toner. So you end up with a big old pile of toner. Of course you end up with the plastic parts. Now we did a video on recycling plastic parts into new sheet. This stuff can be recycled in the same way, chop it up, melt it down, and you can make new parts out of that. But the really essential components, actually, are, out of this one, these. I've got these four bars. Now, this one, obviously, is a beautiful bit of aluminium tubing, and that's the sensitive coating on there. It's a plastic coating. So it's a lovely bit of aluminium tubing that we can do a ton of stuff with, and we're going to do some stuff with that. There's inevitably a nice steel bar, so that's obviously uh, six mil. It was coated in rubber. The rubber came off actually, but wasn't actually very good. So there's that. Then in here, like that, was that piece there. Now this is just another bit of aluminium tubing. It's got a graphite coating on it. This bit absolutely fascinated me. This is the magnetic bar. Now, not all of them have a magnetic bar in, but these are fairly ubiquitous. And I had a look at the price of these. Um, they're 50 rupees, apparently. Now, you only get them on Alibaba. 50 rupees, uh, I don't know, quite know what that is, but I think it's about a pound or so. It's really cheap. But it's quite a strong magnet. Now, one of the things that happens to these is these demagnetize. Um, but it's quite a strong magnet when it's not too old. And if it does demagnetize, you can remagnetize it. Curiously enough, it's actually um, magnetized north south along its length. So this is north, this is south. It's not north south end to end. So north south is not the way it goes, it's north south that way. So obviously that is amazingly useful and especially if we um, want to remagnetize it. So we're going to be looking at using that in future videos. So there's quite a few bits we can get out of this for videos and for projects that we can um, do. Now obviously the bulk material you're gonna get actually is the waste toner. Toner again varies. Quite a lot of it is carbon black covered in wax and plastic because it's meant to fuse. This stuff is also carbon black covered in wax and plastic, but there's quite a lot of um, magnetite in there. And often when you have a magnetic mixing bar in your toner cartridge, your toner is going to be magnetic because it contains iron oxide. That is absolutely fascinating that we have a magnetic toner. Easy to test, just stick a magnet on it. If you stick a magnet on it, then we'll be able to test if that's magnetic or not. So this video is going to be how to use the magnetic properties of the toner to make your own magnets. So it's not magnetic in and of itself. And because it's coated in plastic, what you can do is heat this gently and cast this into any shape that you want. So the first thing we're going to do is cast a shape out of this. So to make solid blocks from toner actually is really easy because obviously it's meant to melt and fuse. It's what it does with the paper. All we need to do is give it a bit of temperature and put it into something it won't stick to because it sticks like you wouldn't believe. 
Um, so if you put it in glass, it'll stick to glass. If you put it in steel, it'll stick to steel. So we've got a bit of silicon rubber here. This is a, a cooking dish, actually. It's meant to be good up to 400 degrees centigrade. It'll certainly take 220, 230, and that's well above the temperature we need to actually fuse this stuff. This stuff fuses at a relatively low temperature. I believe it's somewhere between 1820, not 100 percent sure. So I'm going to put some of this in this, stick it in the oven at 120, and we're going to check and see how it fuses. So I did put a load in, but I started this at 150. It kind of started melting at 150. It took it all the way up to 220 and gave it half an hour. And that is what we got. One solid block of plastic. Now, that, as I say, it, it is magnetic in that I can stick a magnet to it. There we go. That's because of the iron oxide. But of itself, it's not magnetic. Has no attraction whatsoever. Now, you'd expect it to melt in a block because it is basically a plastic and that's basically what it's designed to do. Anyway, looking cool. So I quickly ran it in the saw and it does saw and it does sand, which is good. So it means that we could cast this in any shape we like as long as we have the rubber mould and uh, we can saw it and sand it into the shape that we want if we only have a particularly large rubber mould. I mean, you could make the rubber mould yourself out of something like household silicon. But if you've only got one, then you make a large lumpy shape, you can always make that shape into smaller shapes just by sawing and sanding it. That's really interesting. So by far the easiest way to magnetise something is called stroke magnetisation. You take a little bit of the stuff that was not magnetic, and all you do is in the same direction, take a bar magnet and then stroke the material always in the same direction. And that will actually successfully magnetise that material. Let's have a look at that. So what I've got there is a steel spring, and here's a bit that I haven't magnetised. And if I pass that across, you'll see absolutely nothing happens. Here's a bit that we did the stroking magnetisation on, and if I pass that across the coil, oops, you can see it's just deflecting the coil. There we go. So we can just deflect that coil so that bit has been magnetised. OK, granted, that was not the world's strongest magnet, but it's actually really interesting that we can magnetise that. Now let's build something that we uh, can use to hopefully make a stronger magnetic field, and that is a magnetizer. To do that, we're going to use this thing, which is a synchronous motor from a microwave oven. So here's our synchronous motor. If we flip that top off, and it's just held on by four little lugs that you bend back, what you can see is a whole load of gears. Those gears obviously come out, and they come out just by flipping them out. And then in there is a small magnet on a pin. So that's a circular magnet, goes in the pin there. Now if we get this section out, we can see what's underneath there. And what we've got, there we go, is a coil. And that's actually a 240 volt coil. Now that'll depend on your area. If you're living in a country that has a lower voltage, the coil will be rated to that voltage. This one is rated to 240 because I'm here in the UK. And that can be the heart of our magnetizer. Okay, so I was going to do a circuit diagram of this, but to be honest, it's so beautifully simple, there's no real need. You only need four things. So the first thing you're going to need is a bit of a lead with the plug for your country on one end and the bare wires on the other. And those wires, we're going to use the live and the neutral. Now, if we take our coil, what we need is some degree of rectification. Now, we could use a full bridge rectifier, but no need. A simple one N4007 diode is just plenty good enough. The cathode is the one with the silver band on it, and that goes pointing towards the coil. So you're going to attach that there like that. So obviously, solder that on. Solder the live onto the anode side of your diode, and then the neutral onto the other side of the diode, and that is your magnetizer complete. Now, it doesn't hurt to have a switch there, just so you can plug it in and turn it off and on. So if we get a switch and we break the live by putting the switch in the live line like that, with the neutral attached there, that's the circuit complete. So I'm going to make that circuit up. OK, so there it is. Live wire going to switch, switch to diode, diode to coil, coil to neutral wire, and a bit of black tape. Now, if you never stick it in a project box. So to use this thing, absolute piece of cake. Just plug it in, make sure it's switched off, and 
When you turn it on, it passes a DC current through that coil, which creates a strong magnetic field. Anything you put in that magnetic field that has remnants is going to magnetize. So it's brilliant for doing things like screwdrivers. So just turn it on, pass it only one direction, turn it off. That screwdriver is now magnetized and can do things like pick up springs and screws and that sort of stuff. But note, I put it in one direction. If you put it in and out, you will demagnetize it and magnetize it. So it's no good. With something like this, it takes a little bit more power to do it. So get it ready, turn it on, pass it in one direction, turn it off if you like, do it again and do that. The other way to do it is to just hold it, turn it on, pass it, pick it out, pick it out and do that five or six times, something like that. And then that'll be magnetized. Now, this is a magnetizer because it passes a DC current. If you want it to demagnetize, you need to flip it between DC and AC. So you just put a switch in that takes out the diode and that will make it a magnetizer and demagnetizer. At the moment, it's a magnetizer. So here's our spring. Here's our magnetized lump of plastic and we can deflect that spring. There we go with our magnetized lump. It's a much stronger reaction. If I actually drag the compass in here, so we've got a compass there with the north pointing in that direction and then we get a strong compass deflection using our magnetized bit of plastic. So a much stronger response than the stroke magnetism. So you're not going to create the world's strongest magnet and the most wonderful generator out of this, that's for sure. But you can make an old toner into a magnet. Now, this was actually really quite interesting. I mean, the material is fairly brittle. It snaps relatively easily. But it does machine tool and it is thermoplastic and it can be recast. So it is, I think, a usable material for making pots. Parts that are basically just infill and maybe not load bearing, but certainly an interesting, useful material for casting plastic parts. We made magnets out of it because of the iron oxide content, so it is in itself magnetic, a magnet will stick to it, but um, it can be made magnetic using a magnetizer. Now, this isn't a particularly powerful magnetizer, that's for sure. I mean, it's good enough for magnetizing screwdrivers and picking up screws. And as you see, saw, we've got a weak magnetic field in here. So I guess if we put a stronger external field, would create a stronger uh, magnetic field in there, just like you do with any magnetizer. But I found that to be really interesting and certainly a good use for old toner rather than just discarding it. Probably make a great science fair project and has very definite applications that you could use in other things. Incidentally, if you want to swap this to a demagnetizer, you basically switch out the diode. So to magnetize, diode in. To demagnetize, diode out. So you just use a two-way switch. I only have an on-off switch. Uh, if I'd had a uh, two-way switch, I would have done that. But an on-off allowed me to just do the magnetizer. Anyway, I hope that video is of interest. There's going to be a little series here of things to do with toner cartridges. And uh, thank you very much. And if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe.